Hey, hey guys. Today we are doing this look right here that is dramatic, smoky, red, blood red. We are going full vampire today. And we are living our best undead lives. Yes. This has been one of my like go-to like southern gothic makeup looks when I just want to really vamp it up and feel pretty but feel a little spooky at the same time. Which is Julie always. I, I like to look a little spooky. I got thin teeth. That's cool. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> oh, I'm so classy. But yeah, I paired this red eye with a dark red lip. It's reading a little brighter on camera than it is in person. So to create this look, I wanted to use the Morphe Boss Mood palette because I'm gonna be reviewing it soon. So I wanted to do a look with it and revisit it a little bit more. Just play with it, get to know her a little better because there's so many shades in here, so many shades <laughs> that I feel like I could never, like, I do want to be able to get to know them all and speak to their quality. But yeah, the Boss Mood is stunning. Let me see if I can get that in frame. Look at all these colors, my god. If I made a palette, yeah, if I ever had a palette, it would probably look just like this. I, I love the pea greens and the reds and the purples and the... This palette just like screams fall, honestly. <laughs> Here I am spraying using it. Doing fall looks in the spring. Who cares? I am living my best vampire life. That is my saying right now. We are doing Southern Gothic makeup over here. And that is what I have on today. I wanna see how I got this Baroque, vampiric, dramatic, monochromatic look. <laughs> Just keep watching and I will show you step by step how I created this eye look and the lips and the highlight and all that good stuff. Just keep on watching. Okay, we're gonna start with the uh, eyes primed with eyeshadow primer or any sort of base you like to use. I personally am using a primer with some concealer over top and I haven't set it. With the Morphe eyeshadows and the Boss Mood palette, I like to use them on a more tacky base, which isn't always the case, but with the Morphe ones, I find they perform a little bit better. Came with the shade Red Carpet first. So, taking Red Carpet on a large fluffy brush I've knocked off the excess. We're gonna go right in to the transition area above the crease slightly and below the brow bone. With windshield wiper motions. And then we're starting on the outer corner and coming in. Keeping most of the pigmentation on the outer portion. And just Pulling the shade up towards the tail of the brow and really diffusing it. I'm very lightly touching the skin. Just tickling it across. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit more and build it up. Okay, now I'm going to take a smaller fluffy brush. This is from BH Cosmetics, the Rose Gold collection. I'm going to jump into the shade called Candy Crush. And I'm going to take it into the crease as well. It's right there. And blend it over. Just so want to bring a little bit more of a vibrant red. I'm going to blend the shade into red carpet. Now I'm going to take this shade Vampy Vixen, how appropriate, and just go into the crease to add some more depth. This shade's a little bit more 
browny and warm. Or, or deeper, sorry. Okay, now on a smaller brush, I'm gonna use a Morphe. What do you call it, little fella? M562. You think I'd memorize that by now because I use this little brush like all the time. Oh my god, why can I not get in frame? There we go. It's very stained. <laughs> it needs a bath. I'm gonna take the shade FOTD, face of the day which is a deeper burgundy cranberry color. I'm gonna take it and go right, a little bit lower, more precise into the crease right in here and blend it along. This is what's really gonna bring some more depth and drama to the look. I think the little windshield wiper motions. This is just really gonna Deepen up the crease. Again, blend up and out in the outer corner. So you're going for a very elongated cat eye shape. And take a little bit more of that shade. Just right out here. And kind of pull up. And then come over. Okay, next I'm gonna take this. Okay, there, yeah, this flat brush. I've spritzed a little bit of setting spray on it. And we're gonna jump into the shade called Bossy AF. It's the metallic cranberry. These do perform a little bit better with a wet brush. Right here, I'm gonna take, oh, drop the brush and hit myself in the face with it. Take two. We'll clean that up later. It's okay. I'm gonna take this shade, the uh, Bossy AF, in the outer portion, and pull it over. So we're gonna do a little bit of a halo. And this is just gonna join up to the crease. Bossy AF, these cringy ass shadow names, my god. Alright, I'm gonna go on the inner corner, the, or the inner portion of the lid, and just oop. Can bring it up to the crease, but not in the crease. You can kind of pull it a little bit higher. I'm keeping the center portion empty. A little bit more, I'm just gonna build that up. And jump into the shade Color Persona, which is a more, a little bit more pink red. It's a little more vibrant. I think it has like a little magenta purple glitters in it. Is that correct? I don't know, we'll see what it goes on the eye. Okay, and this is going to go in the center. Can you see that? I don't think you can. Oh my goodness. There it is. There she is. She's... I can see in person anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is going to go in the middle. Just blend into the other two shades. It just gives a little bit of definition. It's nothing too obvious. You don't really know 100% it's there. It's just something to catch the light. I think what I'm going to actually do is take my finger. Fingers are your best tools. Is there attached to you? You can just pat it on. There, that did a little better. I feel like that does something. <laughs> Not a lot, but it did something. I'm gonna try to build it up a little bit more. Okay, yeah, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. Okay, so now I wanna go back in with my matte shades. 
to really amp them up and bring them back to the party. So I feel like they got a little bit drowned out by the shimmer. So I'm gonna go back into FOTD on that little Morphe brush and go right above the shimmer. Kind of carving it out. Because I have hooded eyes, I have to blend a little bit higher than I normally would on someone else with not hooded eyes. I can relax my eye, see where the skin is folding in and go just above that so that that shade remains visible. You see the difference when I relax it? And I'm actually following my bone shape rather than my skin <laughs> or the fold. I'm following my actual orbit. Uh, is that the orbital bone? No, brow bone. I'm just following right around along it. Yeah, now we're really getting there. Now we go back with that smaller fluffy brush. The uh, BH Cosmetics one with the shade Vampy Vixen. And just kind of go a little bit higher. Relaxing the eye. In person, this looks a little bit deeper than it does on, on the viewfinder, at least. Okay. And lastly, I'm going to go back in with red carpets. Just on the above everything else. Back in that transition area. Windshield wipers. Wiper motion, anyway. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. I'm kind of taking it in a little bit here. Okay, what I think I'm gonna do next is take this plum purple called Power Slayer and kind of use it as my liner and in the outer portion here just to add a little more depth and uh, a little more drama in there. I'm gonna go just right out here just to give a little bit more uh, lift to the eye. Bring the drama. So not that huge into the whole beauty drama community, but I like a dramatic eye. Well, lately I, I kind of got sucked into the stuff with James Charles, man. I need to see where that was gonna go. This shit got crazy. You can see what I'm doing. I'm just deepening up out here, giving us a little bit more oomph. Yes, I do want this look to be dramatic and very vampy and smoky and bloody. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're kind of going for. Yeah, just making sure that shade merges into the others. Just make sure it blends. I think I'm going to take a little bit more of Candy Crush on that same little brush and just come right around there. Just to really get that reddish tone in there good. That didn't make any sense. Just to diffuse that edge there. There we go. Alright, I like that. I think that looks really nice. So I'm going to do my wing off camera because that takes me forever. And it's nothing exciting. It's just standard <laughs> wing. I'm not doing anything fancy or crazy. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and finished up my foundation, contour, and powder, and I'm just baking my under eye, which also serves a second purpose of collecting any fallout that we get from the lower lash line. That's why I always do my eyes first, is because it's easier to me to be able to clean up the fallout and the mess, because I'm messy when I do my eyeshadow. I get it from one end to the other. 
What I'm gonna do now on the lower lash line is actually take a eyeliner and I'm gonna tight line. Okay, I decided to cut for the tight lining because that's a two hand job. I need one hand to gonna tug down. But yeah, this is a great trick for when you're doing red eyeshadow because when you have the red just right up against your eye with no barrier, it can make you look a little sickly sometimes. Sometimes it's a look and I do it. It just depends on what we're going for. And like today we're going for more of a glam red look. And I don't really want to look like a rabbit with red eyes. So what I do is create a nice barrier in here that separates the whites of the eyes and iris from the red eyeshadow. And that just kind of frames it and keeps it from looking too sickly. It's a very good trick. <laughs> I think it makes doing red eyeshadow a little more wearable sometimes. But it's not always necessary. I think I'll do a look showing you how to do red eyeshadow without having a tight line or do the waterline. Because not everybody likes to do that. I don't always. Because I have small eyes. And to me, uh, tight lining isn't always the best option for me. It just really depends on the look. But from day to day, I, I usually don't tight line. Or, well, not tight line. Water line. I tight line these upper parts. Because I have blonde lashes. Like, blondish red lashes. And you can see through them. And it, to me, it just makes it look a little more finished. Okay, so on the lower lash line, for shadow, I'm going to take this Sony Kashuk brush. It's like a flat, smudgy brush, but it's a little bit longer and fluffier. Let me see. Let me turn to the side and then around. You can see it's kind of a paddle, but it's fluffy. I was using the flat version of this to do the, you know, the lid. But first, we're going to go in with the shade. I think I'm just going to take Face of the Day. FOTD. I don't know why I keep calling it Face of the Day. And what we'll do is I'm going to run it right against there and kind of blend that liner with it. If it hadn't set down. I don't think it has. It's a wet and wild one that says it sets, but it really doesn't set that great. But it's like $2. This is In the way that's looking. I'm gonna go ahead and go to another shade. Let's see, what do we want to do? Let's take a little bit of Vampy Vixen and just go just a little bit lower. And bring it up to the wing. So it's all cohesive and just, just a swoop, a swoop up. It's very pulled, elongated, seamlessness. That was my uh, John McLean impression. Seamlessness. So the voice is kind of deep. I could be a, the country version of him. Okay, I'm liking this. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. I can't do that like on Brooklyn Nine. <laughs> Jake is cool, 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 cool. I can't do it. I okay, for the inner corner, I'm going to use a combination of highlighter shades from the uh, Tardis Pro Glow palette, the original one, which you can see here and see just how filthy it is. Why? Why with the soft touch pack packaging? Okay, I'm going to take a combination of the shade Lit, which is like a golden warm highlight it's it's too warm for me to actually use my face unless i really use it sparingly but what i'm gonna do is take a combination of it and stunner on the little flat brush i used to highlight with a while ago so i'm gonna take lit first and just go right into this inner corner okay Get right in that inner part and kind of pull it over just a bit and a little bit of warmth throw it in for me golden warmth okay and hmm, you know what let's take a little bit of what is that called 
fire, the shade below it. Let's see if that brings in a little more. Oof. There wasn't really a gold in the uh, Morphe boss mood that I wanted to use. It has a very yellow gold in it. And that's not what I was going for. I just wanted a more warm champagne gold. Yeah, okay, this is the color I was looking for. Yeah, so we're gonna take lit. No, fire. We're gonna take fire in the inner corner. Just kind of building that up. Just get good kapow shine right there. And over top of that, because that shade's a little bit deeper and too deep on me, I'm gonna take a little bit of stunner, which is the lighter bottom one here, right into this innermost part. There we go. I think that looks cool. Okay, now I got the inner corner highlight going. I kind of pulled it over just a little bit more, like this. And we're gonna go back in with that little tiny Morphe brush that I was using earlier, the uh, M562. Vampy Vixen on it. Just kind of knock off the excess and just kind of run it just right here. Just below that. Get my mirror out again. Back in frame. Here we go. Do the same on the other side. Make sure everything's all even. My eyes trying to water again. Oh, not today, Satan. I'm going to zoom you guys out and we'll finish up the face. With the shade Salem from the Kat Von D fetish blush and highlighter palette. I've been using the head out because the mirror in it's really nice. But yeah, it's got the perfect peach in it. So we're going to use it. And I'm just putting it kind of on the apples and bringing it forward. Or not, sorry, not on the apples, but up here and kind of bringing it down forward. Using a peachy blush and kind of, you know, nothing pinky when you use the red eyeshadow is also a nice way to keep it from looking so sickly. But you also want to make sure there's no redness in parts of your skin that you don't want it in. Like, say for instance, you have hyperpigmentation or rosacea across your nose and your cheeks and chin and forehead that can compete and look a little off with red eyeshadow so what I like to do before I do my foundation is go in with a wet and wild cushion color corrector the one that's for redness and it's a very 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 light it's basically white but with like a hint of green and it's very sheer it's just a cushion product, you, you know, you get the little thingy. It, it will cancel out any redness without adding a green cast to your skin. Because it's such a soft, subtle green. If you're fair like me and have a lot of red undertones, this product, go check it out. It is fantastic for just taking down the redness all over your face. And you can do it more concentrated in areas that may need a little more. But it's not that bright mint pasty color. It's very, very light and sheer. Like it's just enough. And they have it in a lavender, I believe, and a peach, and then like an illuminating one. I wanna get the illuminating one try out. If my lighting is a little weird, it is almost nighttime. Cause I got a late start filming today, like a very late start. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead though, and with that same Kat Von D fetish palette, I'm gonna take the shade Magic. Magic is one of her Metal Crush formulas. And it's very orangey and kind of golden. And to me, these aren't the best for highlighting in the most uh, classic way that we, we like to highlight. This more to me is blush toppers. So I'm gonna take it on that the same brush I used for my highlight, I mean, for my blush. And I'm just gonna come across right here, just as a topper. And why am I not looking in my hair? <laughs> I'm not loving the way my skin came out, but I think with some setting spray it may look a little better. I'm feeling a little too matte. <laughs> and I, man, this lighting is awful. This is actually the second time I've tried filming this look. I tried the day of the Paranormal Cirque. And just that was that day I was talking about everything just was going to hell in a handbasket. Just nothing was working for me that day. 
Yeah, this just gives a nice little glow and a little more color. And take a little bit on the nose. <laughs> the finish of highlighter. I am gonna go back to the Tartis. Tar I don't wanna say Tartis. The Tartis, like artist. It's just be, you know, art themes and stuff. So, yeah, it's the uh, Tartis, which sound, doesn't that not sound just a little weird? Like you're saying something that might not be very nice. A little bit of lit. Just this one here on top, the gold. Bright gold. I feel like my light. I cannot get my lighting good right now. I'm sorry. I gotta get that ring light. Somebody wanna buy me a ring light? Buy me a ring light. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, highlight the tops of my cheeks with this. I'm using this shade kind of sparingly because it is a little deep for me. A little too golden, I would say most times. But it's gonna tie into the look. Because you can, even if you're fair, you still can pull in those gold warm highlights. You just gotta balance them. Because I don't want it to look straight ahead and have a dark cast right there though. So I'm not taking it too high. The uh, highlight for this look is going to be a little extra. We're, we're going a few steps ahead here. <laughs> so we go ahead and take Stunner now. Just bear with me. I'm going to take Stunner up here a little bit higher and come down. I want this look to be very glowy. Nobody liked the dry vampire. There we go. Look at that. Heal you. Up onto the brow bone a little bit. Tip of the nose. Cupid's bow. Little chin action. A little forehead. Why not? Why not? Okay, I've lined my lips with MAC Lip Liner in Auburn. I'm gonna go in with. Sorry, <laughs> another cap on your lipstick. I have a bunch! I have so many! <sighs> anyway, this is the shade Hawkwind, which is such a pretty shade. It is a warmish brownie red. I think we'll tie it nice with this eye look. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that on over top of this liner. The combination of the two, I think I'll get what I'm looking for. Yep, there she is. There she is. That's what I was looking for. That kind of red. Ties into the eyes nice. Oh, look at him here right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna go, uh, judge my hair up, fix that, and put on a nice top. And I'll see y'all for the final look. Okay, I went and fixed the hair a little bit, changed shirts, put on some little spider earrings that are red, black, and gold. So we are going for a very broke, opulent vampire look. She's vampy and she's classy. But yeah, last step of the look, setting spray. Use the L'Oreal Shake and Glow Lumi setting spray. This is pretty good. Pretty nice for getting a nice dewy finish on the skin. It does not help with longevity. But anyway, we're gonna go in with a few spritzes of this. This is the nicest mister on it. Now, we have to dry it. Whew. Am I rich Lux yet? Peter Mon? My fan. This fan really didn't do a whole lot because it's just nice, <laughs> but it's something. My friend got me this like out of the Halloween department on clearance just as a joke. And <laughs> is my ass doing? We're even using it. It's got a cute little skull on it. Oh shit, there it is. Oh shit, bitch, I did it. <laughs> okay, let's get this skin dry. I should have done this before I did my mascara and everything, but living on the edge, living dangerously. Okay, this is the look done.
yeah, here is the finished look using the Morphe Boss Mood palettes using all these beautiful red tones in here that I love. I'm a sucker for red eyeshadow. There's just no way around it. Put that over here, big old thing. This palettes are too big. <laughs> There's so many shades. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this and following along with me. And I know my lighting is a little shit today. It'll get better, we're working on it. We're always improving. But anyway, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. And for all the new subs out there, hi, welcome. Yay, new friends. Just like, subscribe, leave comments, notification bell, whatever, all that crap you're supposed to do. And we're just gonna hang out over here and live our best vampire life. I'll see y'all later. Bye now.